I'm not saying I'm going to rule the world or I'm going to change the world, but I guarantee that I will spark the, the, the brain that will change the world. And that's our job. What's the name of the podcast? It's a pod named Kickback. A pod named Kickback. It's like a tribe called Quest. You can say the whole thing. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to another episode of a pod named Kickback. I am the, um, I don't know what I'm at, the chief kickbacker. I am the head honcho. <laughs> I'm the LeBron James of Kickbacks. I'm bringing my son up next, but uh, I'm no brace new to write this ratchet. If you throw it, I catch it. If you got it, I match it. Each and every week, we write back at it. I am the Black Savage, the Magneto of my people. Jack, talk to him. <laughs> Get fit with Jack. You know, I'm getting you back on track and getting you snatched. So, Every Sunday, right now, you come out to Lake Spivey, 8.30 a.m. We get your Sunday started right. Come get this service work. Uh oh. Yeah. Get <laughs> okay. Work. Wait, man, I'm, I'm coming out there one day. I'm going to come out there. Yeah, oh, my I God. heard that. Get that work. <laughs> all right. Hey, it's your man, Randy T. Man up Monday all day. Y'all know that's where I live. Let's get it. Let's get it. All right, man. Let's, let's, you know what we got to start with? It's right along the bottom of the screen right there. We got to start with our high and low of the week. So, um, Now, yeah, high low. Who wants to go first? Who wants to go first? I'll go first. Of course, I never okay. have lows. I don't know. Yeah, my that's, high, great. that's great. Yes, my high actually was, um, I have two actually. This morning, had a great workout. I had a couple people come out. We hit the trail. We did some workouts. We sweated out. It was nice. I mean, we got there about 8.30, got done by 10. It started our day off. We had the rest of our day. Your girl had a chance to take a nap. I feel amazing. <laughs> so that was one of them. And then one of my clients um, has lost 10 pounds. He's feeling good. His confidence has risen. <clears throat> Outfits and shit. So I'm very proud. <laughs> so mm -hmm. we keep I didn't hit your girl up because we ain't playing around here. Indeed. Okay. Indeed. Ain't mad at that at all. Randy? Hey, right. Hey, look, I I had something that I was going to do, but um, yesterday, my man, um, if if he on, he hitting his joint, man, MJ, he, he shared something with me, man, and that and it, it instantly went to my new high of the week, right? And he uh he out on a retreat doing some on some real man up stuff in a real beautiful place, you know what I'm saying? Like, really, like, getting some things in order and stuff and he he showed you know what i mean he hit me up live and showed me he and he in a beautiful place you know what i'm saying with like if you're really trying to retrace your steps rewind re, you know what i mean refresh refuel you know what i mean and come back charged like this is this is how you do it right and hey man he called and shared that moment with me and it was beautiful that that was my highlight because us as men that's a man up moment we ain't scared to share that with each other, right? That's what we doing. And, and you give you that's energy what it too. was. Yeah. Thank you, Clarissa. Uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> hey, I like the um the new color scheme. This is <laughs> yeah. popping on the screen now. <laughs> right, right. There she is. Um, Thank you. Hey, hey, Clarissa, I told him about it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So my my high um of the week was looking back at, you know, this is the last week of the first half of the year. 
And looking back at where I started in January to where I am right now going into July, I feel amazing about. I feel like I like I feel like I'm, I'm gonna play this Jeezy song, Jeezy and JT later on in the podcast, but that's how I feel right. I feel like Jeezy right now. And um <laughs> it's, it's it's a great, great feeling. My low is like the last three days, like Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, I kind of took my foot off the gas a little bit. And I um so I really I'm really gonna I'm gonna be working. So if you get off this podcast, I'm going back to it. But that would be my low. It's like, damn, how you had this amazing ah, and then you get to the last day and you just yeah. So I still got some time. I still got some time, but that's my high low. Overall, it's a high. I don't oh, take that as Oh, you took some time out for yourself. Sometimes you gotta rest. That's not a bad thing. Oh well, there you go. There you go. So let's just say <laughs> I'm, I'm a blur. I am a blur because I move fast. A lot of women say that, oh my God, you just came through and it was a blur. And it just I mean, things happen, Clarissa. Things happen. But um, I do have my background, like the podcast logo in the background. I don't know if that's what you're talking about. But um, if you can't see my beautiful face, that is a travesty. Oh my god! You gotta do something to fix that, y'all. Jesus. But um, having said that, I think uh, we all in a pretty good space, and I, and I do want to give it up for that. Yes, I love it. Love it. Love the beautiful energy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, but I, 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 I gotta add to the to my high. You know, what I mean that. <laughs> The place I, I was in a nice place myself. I just need, I got I gotta add back to it before it before it go. I, I was in a nice place myself, you know what I'm saying, with some good company, and you know, there it was, and it all just came together. Yeah, cheating like a mother. Okay, all right. Okay. <laughs> okay. I gotta find a job for that. Hold on, where one of my jobs at? Hey, hey, Jackie, you see this shit? <laughs> you see this shit? <laughs> um, have a uh-uh, that. It was a blur. To... <laughs> it's a blur. <laughs> Let's get to our viral story of the week. My left stroke just went viral. All right. Um, before I get into anything heavy. I just wanted to ask that. Have y'all been seeing the Chris Brown meet and greet pictures? Yes. Y'all been paying attention to any of that shit? Yes. And, the, and the one girl, the boyfriend broke up with her and all this crazy stuff. And he taking the, they're taking like a couple pictures. You know, I guess you pay a thousand dollars or two thousand dollars for the meet and greet. And you get this real personal picture with Chris Brown. Some of them he grabbing ass. Some of them he all over. I mean, I want to ask y'all before I get my comment. Um, Randy, how you feeling if your girl do the meet and greet picture with Chris Brown? And it's and it's extra. I mean, I feel like every as a man, if you if you are in a relationship, you need to understand the type of woman that you're in a relationship with. Um <laughs> and I'm if I know you the type that's gonna twerk it and wanna throw a left cheek on his right ear, you know what I mean. I shouldn't be surprised if you do that at the meet and greet. <laughs> you know what I mean? Now, like, if you do the meet and greet and it's something that's out of character and, like, you ain't never threw it on me like that, then, like, no, we got a problem. Yeah, I understand it's Chris Brown, but, yeah, you ain't going to never see him again. You go on with me, right? So, but it comes down to, like, it's just still communication. If it's a problem, somebody been fronting with somebody. Like, any problems that's coming coming out of this, of you getting to the meet and greet and we got problems after this, it's problems going in. I man, mad at that take. What you think, Jack? If I was in a relationship, I'm going to take that $1,000. Me and my man go to Airbnb and he going to have me bent over somewhere. Okay? Oh. <laughs> man, drop. <laughs> shoot it, shoot it. I'm not spending hey, $1,000. Hey. I'm sorry about it. Not doing that. Not doing that. What's the survey say, judges? Somehow that is correct. That is correct. The judges say it's correct. Um, me, me personally, I that kind of stuff don't bother me a whole lot. Um, if it was a podcast, I'd be like, wait a minute. I know that nigga. We, we competing. Don't, don't don't be on this motherfucker. Like nah. And I was rapping, they were like, don't be on a rapper because we competing. You know what I'm saying? 
But um, I did it a girl. I think I, I mentioned this on a podcast before that was in love with us. Like she had an usher thing, like I had with that other girl that was on Murder Inc. And I'm like, if she met us, I'm, I mean, yeah, what the, you know, what I'm saying that, that's been a 20 year quest. I'm not. Wherever right. he can let you just yeah, go crazy. Go, I, I might pay the thousand for you to go crazy. You know what I'm saying? Nah, nah, I mean, nah. hey, well, 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 tell her to go crazy. You don't want her to bring nothing back now. Well, not, not that crazy. Not because <laughs> just a meal and drink just with a hundred people in the room. It's, it's right, a, right. Not <laughs> the people in the room, they take me pictures. There ain't nothing like that. But if, you know, we want to do some crazy pose. Now, if she take it to the next level and they exchange numbers or Okay, and that's what one uh, situation happened. Chris Brown followed the girl on Instagram, and now he's liking her pictures, and the boyfriend is a little uncomfortable. That man, that that might that might uh, I might be like Chris, why are you on the girl page? Man, I mean, fuck you up, why? Man, nah. Hey, but, look, look, man, I'm I'm flattered. I'm flattered for me, for real. Like if Chris, if C Breezy after mine's like, yeah, come for me, bruh. Like, but because if he can take her, then she wasn't ever mine in the first place. If stardom is what you chasing, you know what I mean. Go get that. You know what I mean? Because he, he, I believe he, that. Because he probably, he probably is gonna give you, fly you somewhere, and then send you back with your heart broke, and then now it's gonna be like, see what you messed up. I hope it was worth it, right? But any woman so my, with my, real substance. Already- and Jack, correct me if I'm wrong. Any woman with real substance, it wouldn't matter if Chris Brown liking her pictures. If she in love with her man, it ain't. That's bullshit. I don't fuck many a girl in love with her man. I don't buy that shit at all. They was in love and they just wanted to fuck. That, that I, asked I, I, I asked Jackie. I asked Jack. That wasn't a question for you. That was for Jack. I said, correct me, Jack. You're going to be laughing looking at these DMs. <laughs> Okay, and, 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 and that's certain women, but I'm my man whatever. I know women who fuck broke niggas who ain't got no money or nothing to offer but dick. So the, the, I agree. The girl, I, well, I, I wasn't denying I, that. Nobody, nobody yeah. denied that. But I, but this is how I view it. And I saw this on an old episode. I remember that TV show Twenty One Jump Street, not yeah. Twenty One Jump Street. Uh, the New York New York Undercover. The New York Undercover. Malik Yoba. So the Spanish dude. Well, he was dating the Spanish girl. The black version of the same show. Right, right, right. A Spanish dude was dating a Spanish girl and they had broken up. And he was trying to get back with her, but another dude had gotten the picture. And the mother was like, what are you doing? So and so just took her out on a date. He was like, hey, she grown. If she want to go out with him, there's nothing I can do about that. And then she was like, what, what's wrong with you? Like, you sound like a bitch. And he was like, I'm a man. I'm if that's what she wants, I'm a, I'm gonna let her do what she want to do. Like what, what what you want me to do? And she was like, "You're a Knicks fan, right?" He was like, "Yeah." Let's say that bum Reggie Miller is driving down the lane for a layup. Or you can get out the wheel like, "Oh, if he wants to make the shot, he can just make it." Or why are you gonna try to block it? And I kept that shit. That's the TV show, but I kept that shit with me my whole life because we was kids when that shit was out. The game ain't cop and blow. The game is cop and keep. That's just some player shit. I'm just nah, 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 I'm gonna leave it there. The game man cop and blow is cop and keep. So I'm not just stepping aside and oh, uh, I guess if you get her, you get her. No, I ain't doing that. Cause I didn't put too many women that love their man, love them. So that's my take on it. But now I want to get into something a little more serious, something that really had really grinded <laughs> my gears this week. It's only a couple <laughs> things that can really make me mad, and we talk about two of them today. Um, but this one was, I want to start it with everybody that has been complaining that Bronny James was drafted. I want to start, I'm going to start it with this, and then I'm going to go into my point. Mitchell, shut your whole ass up and make some drums, nigga. <laughs> nepotism. It's nepotism. Because LeBron James played for the Lakers and there's people in the NBA, people that didn't get drafted. And because LeBron James got his son. Nigga, it's the 55th pick. It was only 58 picks in a draft. The 50s don't even usually make the damn team. It's usually a throwaway pick. If they had drafted LeBron James in the first round, I would have thought that was stupid and excessive and clearly nepotism and clearly they don't give a fuck about their team. Clearly, they're just trying to appease LeBron. They drafted him with the third to last pick. 
which are all non-guaranteed contracts because nobody expects that player to even make the team. And then these fucking idiots was like, well, it was another player that averaged 16 points. He didn't get drafted. But it was a player who averaged two points in the first round that did get drafted. First round. I hear the LeBron James. Why are you not complaining about him? Giannis brother, Thanasis, has a Nike deal and has been on the Bucks for like seven years only because it pleases Giannis. J.R. Smith's little brother was signed to the New York Knicks. Only because, and J.R. Smith ain't even no star. Only because it pleased him. Exactly. Um, Jerry Jones, my favorite team, the Cowboys. Who's the president of basketball of football operations? Steven Jones. Uh, the Lakers we're talking about. Right, the, the owner was um, Dr. Buss, who's the president of basketball operations until he got fired a couple of years ago. Gene Buss, who's the owner of the team now? Genie Buss. Nobody complained about nepotism there. My favorite basketball team, the Wizards. Our most celebrated athlete is Wes Unsealed, who was just the coach of the Washington Wizards. Wes Unsealed Jr. It happens everywhere. And this is the most he insignificant. He wasn't very good, but he was not. And neither was his father as far as a coach. But that's neither here nor there. That's neither here nor there. <laughs> How are you upset? Angry Still like I got love for Martin. you, man. Just yeah, Ronnie coach. James is taking all of these positions away. No, he's not, dog. He's taking away a non guarantee. If you're the Lakers, who are you gonna draft? The tw- the 12 year old kid you saw every day with his father, and his father bought you a title, and now he's 18. And now he's in the league, now he's in the draft, or some dude from Senegal, Africa that you never really seen play. Who are you gonna take a chance on? That 55th position is let's take a chance on somebody. He's been working out at the Lakers facility for six years. You don't think they think they can bring the most out of him? You don't think they think that they, that they care enough as opposed to a strange child from Alaska or New Hampshire or Georgia? They taking somebody they know that knows the whole bus family that's a part of the organization already. It's it's mind blowing how angry people are that the Lakers chose Ronnie. Let, let's see, it's all nepotism. They just did for LeBron, and it was the first pick in the draft. So, mm-hmm. I will say this, and I we've all experienced this, we've all seen this, but this is no different from. These corporate America uh, got people on the jobs for years and years. We all been there. We've all seen, oh, yeah, we know you're going to get it. We know we, you're going to get the next position. Then here come they child out of high school with no experience with a whole office just because the name and you pass it on to your kids. It's no different. So I don't know why people are complaining about. Yeah. I actually office. do think it's a slight difference because. Ronnie didn't take a position from a more qualified person. If it's if it's the 55th pick, the third pick in the the third pick from the last in the draft, y'all are all bums. <laughs> Everybody there's a bum. It's not like the superstar lasting the best player in college lasted to the 55th pick. Everybody down there is a bum. It's like choose your bum. <laughs> and res- respectfully to Bronny, because I am a I'm a Bronny fan. I don't care what nobody say. But everybody down there is a bum. You just pick the bum you like. Yeah. All right. I'm I'm like this. At, at, at that end of the draft, I don't know enough about X and O's and the way it's basketball go to know if that if this was a great basketball pick, you know what I mean? Or for for them that wise. Like with the X and O's drawing it up strategy wise. I don't know that. If I look at his stats, like he didn't. He only averaged, he didn't have, he wasn't a high scorer at the one year that he was at USC. He was a, I mean, he was really a below, he was an average dude. Like, I think it was like four points or something like that. And I honestly believe um, if he had not been LeBron James' son, that he be he would have to work his way through the G League, which he's still gonna, probably going to have to do anyway. Um, but he does have some talent. But it was two things that happened. Um, I was I was watching LeBron James Instagram today, and he talked about how he felt when he saw his son's number nine be revealed. 
you know what I mean, which was a number that like Nick Van Axel, Rajon Rondo, some you know, some other players, Lakers were, and how that moment made him feel. And I remembered another Instagram post of his when he talked about what it would be like to be able to play with his son. And one of the great uh, mindset coaches, Bob, Bob Proctor, always talks about progressive realization. So, like, I was like, at that moment, LeBron stated something that he wanted to realize to happen. And now that was the moment seeing his numbers, his son num- number being revealed. He's starting to realize this is something that I said that I yeah. wanted to happen and yeah. like so i don't basketball moves y'all argue that all day long but him bringing him in the chance that that that's gonna happen and what that may happen in that moment for the fan base for the team you know you had some you had some players that were just inspirational for teams way beyond their value right like i think draymond green has been one of those i think like Yadonis haslam has been one of those and you had some some dudes that just what it's just what they meant right didn't show up in the stats but like this is something that could ignite the fan base right for somebody who's been good brought him a ring so i don't even care about all of that man like let's see what's happened let's go it's a great <laughs> moment for black history right. gonna be the first time yeah. that it's ever done in NBA history, and it's going to be a black man and a black son doing it for the yeah. first time ever. And he said he wanted it, right? Ain't no, and that's ain't no other storyline beyond that. Period for me. <laughs> well, there, Talk to him. <laughs> Talk to him. Yeah, for real. So yeah, man, y'all, y'all get off money, dick, man. For real, that's how I feel. Get off right. the man. Oh yeah, I ain't gonna be. I ain't, I ain't hey, correct the banner. We 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 don't have some. We don't had a whole bunch of little average white boys who all of them been in the league. Like I can't even think of their names. It been like three or four of them, <laughs> and all of them was bench players. But they all got a chance to play. Wasn't none of them good. And we want no storylines about all of them that came through here and right. had jobs forever and probably on holding a clipboard somewhere making a good job. Like nah, get off my of man. Like right out. Facts. Right. Facts. Congratulations, Facts. Bron, to the Bron, LeBron exactly. family, to the James family. Cheers. Okay, all right. I thought I was on Do Not Disturb. I know when my hotline bling. <laughs> <laughs> right. I definitely was on Do Not Disturb, but anyway, um, having said that, man, hey, congratulations to Bronny and Bron, man. I'm looking forward to it. I'm got Salute. I got to get my Wizards jersey. I got to get my Saw jersey, my Bob Currington jersey, whatever. But I might give me a Bronny Jones. Just, I love the story, man. If you don't love it, then that's too bad for you, man. But we're going to move right. on to our kickback conversation of the week. And I thought this, I, I really was hoping Brittany was going to be here because she all fancy and shit. But I wanted to ask y'all to because I haven't been out of the we country. <laughs> I ain't saying that. Yeah, you know, Jack. If you if you listen to Brad, see still but catching it. I still I do need um a little bit of advice. I want to talk about a couple of things. One, this is gonna um, next week. I'm going out of the country for the first time in like 30 years. You know, I've been around the country. I ain't left the country in shit, three decades. Later. That's a long time. I'm telling my age and everything. But I wanted to know from you guys' perspective what is needed for a successful out the country vacation. For those that don't know, I'm going to Costa Rica. So, what, what do you think is needed to take? I'm saying that a resort, uh, four seasons, mind you. Um, and what are your favorite vacation spots? First, tell me what I need to bring. What do I need to be aware of? What do I need to make sure I have? And then let's go into um, some of y'all favorite spots. But first, what do I need to do? I'm lost. And I got um, about a week. Well, definitely when you get there, stay in the tourist spot. Do not venture anywhere else at this state that we're in right now. We don't want to see that we no, did not come back from Costa Rica. <laughs> Ooh, the by, by the Costa Rican, by the Costa, Costa Rican freaking I'm a sex slave over there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wait a minute. I'm not want to. Wait a minute. Go ahead, Jack. Go ahead. <laughs> 
Who told y'all to rescue me? <laughs> right. Damn it. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> but um, you definitely want to take, uh, you know, wipes, uh, you know, hand sanitizer. Um, you definitely want to take everything to keep yourself clean. Um, when you go to some of these countries, you don't know what they have or if they're lacking anything as far as that. So you definitely want to take that for yourself. Um, you, you definitely want to check your bed. You definitely want to check your mirrors. You definitely want to check out when you get into your room. Um but I mean, the most, the best thing that you need to be taking is a sense of peace, serenity, and happiness that everything is going to go well on this trip. You're going to enjoy yourself. You're not going to worry like you are right now. <laughs> and you're, you're really going to enjoy yourself and you're going to be able to embrace the moment while you're there. Well said. Indeed. Indeed. Well, well, well. Randy, give me some game. What I need to do. Right. What I need to do. All right, I'm a, I'm gonna start you from the bottom to the top because you know I'm a, I'm a traveler, I'm a world traveler, and I love to travel the world. If y'all don't know, been to 14 countries and counting. Hey, let's planning go. on going right on my second passport. Right, uh, that's a humble brag. That's by the grace of God. Right, right. Uh, what my job? What my job? <laughs> I'm leaving conspicuous consumption. Really, if you have it, flaunt it. Really. <laughs> so I I and I was I was having this conversation with a with a special friend not too long ago about like for me when I'm going somewhere one thing that I always want to do I have an agenda but it's a loose one right because I still want to make sure that I'm gonna leave some some time to freestyle to do nothing or the change and it's always tentative I might slide something in or slide something out but. Right. Two, one thing happened to me before, and I was just saying this today, that I went somewhere and I came back and somebody was like, did you do this? Did you do that? Did you go here? Did you go there? And I was like, they do this? They had that? I could have ate that? I was like, I ain't know they had And I was pissed, right? <laughs> and I was like, that will never, ever, ever happen to me again that I'm going to go somewhere and I knew they offered some something that I couldn't get nowhere else but in this place, and I did not do it. So I always, always look for the top five things that you have to see anywhere that I go, period. I was, and I might not even see all the top five, you know what I'm saying? Because it mm -hmm. might be some stuff that I, hey, I don't care nothing about that, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. I wanted to know that I had the opportunity to not do that, you know what I'm saying? To, right. to turn that down, to not know that I could have did that, then you feel bad, <laughs> right? So I'm going to tell you, right. always first thing, top five things, make sure you do that. And then after that, if you're a single man, make sure that you are well protected in the size that protects you. <laughs> you're not guaranteed to be accommodated <laughs> and you might run into a situation, you know what I'm saying, that, you know, and you might not be feeling that froggy, you know what I'm saying? I, I never do, but, you know, do you. Especially you out of the country, different stuff come over there that you might not even know about, right? Mm -hmm. So that'd be my helmet too, right? And then if on that, the top, I'm and I'm if you're a cuisine man like me, the foods you should, the stuff that you gotta eat, that you gotta try, right? Because I'll be mad about that too. I wanna, that's what we exchange cultures in two ways. I think it's in music and it's in food, it's universal. Right. Nobody don't have to speak the same language or nothing like we can understand that and can't just be in each other's face and don't say a word. Right. And we can exchange that and be like, oh, that's what y'all do. Oh, this is what y'all do. Right. And we get that. Right. So those be my top three. You know what I'm saying? If you do those, okay. everything else will fall in place, man. I like that. Oh, OK. Yeah. I'm actually It's a, my whole agency is going. So she's been putting together. Um. I think we got. Oh, a, yeah. Know the spots where you stand at, too, especially your hotel, wherever you stand at. Know what they offer before mm -hmm. you get there. Yeah, I've been on the website. And they I got a homegirl that worked there. And, and now, now I'm going to do my humble brand. It's the guy right. I don't, even trust, I don't care. Don't trust her. Still know what they can do. So you know what to oh, yeah. ask her. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, you, you know what to ask her. 
I've been in a four seasons groupie for the last three months. I've been on that website looking at them. This is a menu. Oh, this is what they do. Okay. This is a four season resort. What does a five diamond resort mean? Why yeah. is it a diamond instead of a star? What does this mean? It was that. So yeah, and then she was like, "You're gonna love it." She said, uh, "When you pull up, you're gonna feel like you're driving into Jurassic Park." But I promise, there's uh-huh. no dinosaurs. I was like, <laughs> "No dinosaurs." What does that mean? Is it that big? Like, like what? what is, like, damn. Right. I was like, that wouldn't have been appealing at all right there. I'm on yeah, the website like Google it now. <laughs> <laughs> I, just take a look at like, it, I think a it, monkey it, might be in my room. Like, what you, right. what are you saying? <laughs> it's beautiful, though. I'm going to send y'all a YouTube yeah. video. It is beautiful. It's like, it's it's on some other shit. Um, and I can't wait. I ain't never seen no shit like this before. So this is... uh, uh stories. Huh? I'll be tuning to your stories on Instagram. Oh, hell yeah. Hell That's yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, so what we doing again? We doing, We got a luau. We got an awards dinner for the agency. We got, a, um, I think, a boat trip. And then we riding ATVs. It's like a bunch of different okay. activities. I might not do every single one, but I know we got a... Um, hey, uh, man, those ATVs, ATVs and the luau, but I miss those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the luau, definitely. They got, the ATVs, I don't know if I want to do that over the boat. I got, I got pick one. Yeah. I think yeah, you know, I think black, it. black, black people in water. <laughs> we never went this to water Lake activities. Let's... Yeah, this ain't Lake Lanier. <laughs> so I ain't gonna be worried Since about. Since water bands went out of style, we we don't care about water activities no more. <laughs> That's funny. Water bands, some of them did. crazy. But um, now I want to get into our. What the, well, I hope that everybody that's tuned in, I hope you have some ideas of what you want to um, experience when you go on these trips. And if you have tips or advice for me, inbox me, DM me, respond on YouTube, let me know what you think if we miss anything. And I know to bring insect repellent and maybe right. neospawn or a Band-Aid or some shit. And, um, mm, sunscreen. If y'all got some tips, y'all know some good stuff you need to do in Costa Rica, drop them some lines. Bounce, Hit the bounce pass. Tell them what to do. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Um, spots. Send them some spots to head to that you've been to or that you've experienced that you know oh. they like. That's what I was supposed to ask you. He looked like a cute Costa Rican, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Carissa, I would have been your plus one if you would have invited me. We could have dated together. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so real quick, what's your favorite vacation spot? Just real quick, I'm gonna run through this real quick. Oh, As you've been man, what's your favorite I, place? The until something tops it, it's gonna it's still gonna be um man, France was really good. I had a good time, but it's still Montenegro, man. Um mm. the, Montenegro is still it's still one of those places that's still off the beaten path, and it is still one it's still one of the best vacations I've ever done. Okay. Look it up. Yeah, if you never heard of it, look Montenegro. Well, where, where is that? It sounds amazing. Uh, East, Eastern Europe. Oh, okay. E- well, Eastern cool. Europe, man. It was up the coast of Croatia. Belgrade found a place up in there with Jay Z and Jay Z had actually had did a concert in a place in that country called Belgrade. Um, and oh, had, just had a yeah. That's 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 it. That's the Montenegro. That's in the Montenegro country. So you know it's something there. Jay Z and Beyonce and them been there. You know what I mean? You know it's money there for one. <laughs> cause they, okay. If they, if they ain't going nowhere, Nothing where no else. poor people at, because they got to be able to afford the tickets, right? right. <laughs> Even in a foreign country. Right? So uh, nah, but yeah, that's why the Montenegro. Was Randy Z out there. They're like, that's Randy Z. Oh man, they, I was at one place, man. They thought I was Michael Jordan for like a week, for like two days, and and I went with it, and I went with it. I was signing autographs and everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when I was in, hey, when if, I was if y'all, it's like one hundred percent not lying. <laughs> Taking pictures of um, people. <laughs> I went to Ireland, um, Dundalk and Dublin, Ireland, as a kid, and and I actually performed. So they really was like, and they never really seen black people. So they were just like. I want to touch your arm. Yeah, right. What are you oh, made yeah. of? That's how I got that too. I got that yeah. too. With some of the first but, black people to ever lay eyes on. I was the first yeah, black yeah, person yeah. they ever lay eyes on in life. 
but it was Who's beautiful. It, it was school? it wasn't prejudice. It wasn't no prejudice or like on, it was just on. like wow. I want to meet you. I want to talk to you. What like yeah, like Dude said, want to touch you. I had some of that too. Just want to. I just want to feel your head. Right. Yeah, with well, the wildest yeah, you know, I, I was ways, so mine's kind of all right. So I was feeling, I was feeling you know, keen. Was, but have y'all seen those videos where I think they're either Asian descent, where they're like clinging onto the black men, like the black men are they like like legs wrapped around them, like won't let them go. Y'all haven't seen those videos? I don't know what yeah. I keep seeing. Them. I got like, some of those in my don't, phone. Don't tell new about that. He gonna fly there tomorrow. <laughs> I got some of those videos on my phone where they they black women. I I, I think I know what you're talking about. But um, I had, I was a kid, which is why I was so mad because the older kids that were there performing, they was like they they 18. They was really taking advantage of it. I was right 12 years old, 11 years old. What was you know? All I got was a kiss on the cheek and like y'all. The girls love me. I love it here. You know what I'm saying? But they really had like, a little bit more fun. But um, that's definitely uh, <laughs> that's definitely what to do, man. Um, yeah. so having said I'm that, let's get y'all what the fuck story of the week, man. Yes, I'm. I'm not it's playing. It's real. It's real. It's real. It's real. And we just got. Um, talking about um, the Asians. So North Korea, they publicly executed a 22-year-old man for allegedly listening to K-pop. A 22-year-old man in North Korea was publicly executed for listening to K-pop, according to a 2024 report by South Korea. It highlights North Korea's strict efforts to block outside culture and influence, especially from the youth. And that's via The Guardian. I don't even know what the fuck to say to that. That's why it's literally what the fuck? I know that K-pop is like the pop, like the Asian pop R&B music shit, and they be dancing and all that. But I'm just like, what? Like, yeah, literally, what? Right. You know, <laughs> executing people for listening to music. I do understand not wanting outside culture to influence your culture, but I do not understand murdering someone because of it and i mean it, these dictatorships these socialist countries the communists they kind of do what they want to do it's like been living in virginia and that's common wolf they just do they whatever charge they want to give you you speeding ticket 10 years in jail god damn nigga. you know but <laughs> they kind of do what they want yeah. and I, I was just blown away by this I, I, you know definitely um Sending positive energy to the to the life that was lost to the family and friends and the countrymen that were affected. Because I know they had to scare the shit out of everybody. Yeah. Um so prayers and positive energy to y'all, but like god damn, I, I that was the last thing I thought I was gonna see when I was scrolling social media. Like, what? That's crazy. I, I don't even know what to say about that, man. Um and again, condolences, you know, first of all, to all the family and friends and, and anyone who that directly um, affected. Uh, we we definitely want to be sensitive to how they feel about the young man losing his life. Right. Um, but one thing that I am, all, I am never quick to try to judge another culture from the outside looking in. Um, but I feel like if... I live in a society where I can play a song that might get me killed. I'm going to be aware of it. I don't think that I'm going to be born and raised in a, in a place where I don't understand what might get me killed or and what can let me live again, not being insensitive to anything of the tragedy that occurred. But it is my belief that if I live in that culture, that I understand that. Like, if and, um, you know, being mindful, I think back in our culture in DC to be comparative, like, I know if we go back to the 90s, um, I understand the neighborhoods that if I walk through, 
like what subject to happen to me if I'm not from that neighborhood, right? <laughs> you knew what it was like walking through Murray Farms back in the days or Valley Green or, you know, it's certain neighborhoods that you knew. And we ain't never did, and we never been about any gang stuff. So it wasn't as easy. I feel like California people have it easy. Red, blues, and where y'all got colors at, it's defined. You know what I mean? I know who you are just by what you wear. It ain't like that here. Like, you just on the wrong street, and we just know, like, you ain't from here. You know what I mean? And, like, them, like that just might get you got. You know what I mean? But if that happens in that area, I'm not surprised. And me and my man, Nashawn, if he on this joint watching now, we got jumped at Burry Farms before. But guess what? We knew when we was going over there to see some girls, we was taking a chance that if these Burry Farm dudes catch us in their hood, like they gonna automatically know we ain't from here and we automatically know the danger that we facing and what's gonna go down if this happened and it did and we got it. You know what I mean? It was a good it was a good fight. It was like two on ten. Uh, but you know, we did what we did. Yeah, I, I definitely I get that. I get, you just brought me back to times where I was walking up and down the street with my albums, uh, with my mixtapes trying to sell my CDs in different neighborhoods. And niggas like, what you doing here? I'm like, I rap. They like, right. this motherfucker crazy. You really came yeah. here with your CD? I'm like, yeah, put, put it on in your car. And they was like, this motherfucker, I gotta play it. This nigga crazy as hell walking back here with a goddamn CD. Something about I rap. Hey, y'all rappers on? gotta be brave, but y'all can get passes yeah. too, though. <laughs> and, and, and I sold a whole lot. I sold a Let, whole unless lot. you whack. Know? If you whack, though, you know what I mean. You you know what I mean? <laughs> hey, you whack. <laughs> you I mean, just better not be whack. Hey. If they, hey, if they listen to you, you better not be whack when they when you give them some. <laughs> I'm gonna give you the test. I'm give you to the course. You got to the course. But um, okay, I do. We about to mop you up. I you get what you, in fact, I get what you're saying, but at the same time, I think about, yeah, you know, like. Eating at a bus counter in America, if you black right. in the 60s, you could be killed just by eating at the counter. Yeah. Um, drinking out the white water fountain. That was your life on the line. And, it and took we was aware of that danger, though. But, but right. we and, and, was aware. And, and, but you was aware right, of that right. danger, though, right? I agree. <laughs> but, but, but yeah. How did you feel when Emmett Till was murdered? He was aware of it? Yeah, he was. Absolutely. Is that, when, is when, his parents, when his parents sent them, when they when his parents sent him there for the side for his mom, and she even admitted it in interviews that she knew when he sent them there for the South that he was subject to danger from more, more danger from where I, he lived to where he was all, going we, because it was all more prejudice that. there. But right, we all know there's danger. Like that, that's life. I'm saying, yeah. how did you feel about it? No, no, I oh yeah, no, I felt I felt bad. I said I started with that. I felt horrible about the incident. Like, cause I don't think culture should never be an excuse for that someone the deter, a determination of whether someone gets to continue on living or not right. based and, on and kids, based on something that culture has correct has has determined yeah. that is yeah, hold, correct. Hold, 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 hold on, Randy, because my point is you push cultural lines. In order to create change, so when her, when Rosa Parks didn't get up out of that seat, it was a chance she could have been killed. But she was pushing the line. When this young man played the music, it was he, like we both think it was a chance he knew he could be killed, but he was pushing the line. And I think that right. you need people to push the line to create change. Now, Agreed. how much do you cry over that? Ooh, how much do you celebrate their sacrifice? Hmm. Maybe, but you need people that will take that chance in order to create change. If Rosa Parks Agreed. stays, that gives up her seat, then maybe we maybe we're still riding the back of the bus um, uh, by someone else's decision, not having the choice to sit in the back of the front. Maybe you know if um, I don't even know Martin Luther King doesn't sit at that doesn't do that uh, sit in. Maybe we still can't eat at the same counters. You know, it, it takes somebody to do something quote unquote courageous or heroic to create change. Now I don't know this young man. I don't know if that's what he did. Right. If he was just listening to music. I don't right. know. Sometimes right. it takes that. So I'm I'm curious I'd be curious to see how this perpetuates going <laughs> forward. And it, and it touches me a little differently because I remember the story that it's a book called Kaffa Boy. Kaffa means nigger in South African. So instead of calling you a nigger, they would call you a Kaffa. 
And he told a story about how they, they would go to every every house. Um, come outside. Um, what do you believe in? You know, I'm I'm Muslim. Kill him. When all every, all the neighbors are standing outside. What do you believe in? I'm this. Kill him. What do you believe in? I'm Christian. You get to live. What do you believe in? Well, I'm Muslim. Kill him. And they did that in front of the whole neighborhood in several different villages. Like, t- as an example, you heard what the fuck we said, fall in line. You believe what we say you believe. And when right. you see that, it's kind of like when the guy stands up and says, well, I'm I'm, I'm Hebrew. I don't know. Whatever he says, you kind of go, you know he's going to die. But you still, there's still uh, an appreciation for the sacrifice. And when I heard right. this story, I, I don't know if this dude was just on some little kid shit and this being silly, or if it yeah. was truly and we might never know. We we might never yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. but I, but that, I feel like this. I mean. Yeah, you're right. You're right. But look, you're going whether you are an intentional or an unintentional martyr, right? We still will mourn the loss, but we will take the victory that comes behind that, right? Whether oh. so, so like oh. we, we and. <laughs> and, and that's how we always gonna look at that. Boom. Jackie, I'm giving you the last word on this. Um, again, prayers go out to the family. Um, we don't know, you know, the, everything that's surrounding the situation, but it's still sad when you hear about it. Um, because it's just it, it just gives you questions, all types of questions that you think about around surrounding the situation. Um, hopefully this doesn't happen again, or hopefully this does cause some change in the country. So um, I'm looking to see the more positive influence that this has this has over their country. So hopefully he has, you know, left an impression. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. He definitely has. And now <laughs> this this is something else that has left an impression, not in a good way. Not in a good way at all. <laughs> I mean, they can I mean, double the double good. double shut up joke. Man, so shut your whole ass up and make some drums, nigga. So dumb. You are really dumb. For real. The presidential debate. Here we go. We got the uh, master, leader, master manipulator Donald Trump and the newly deceased <laughs> president by the Sleepy Joe. I was yeah. watching this shit just like, geez, this, this can't be all we got. This is our two choices. This is going to be great. This is going to be amazing. We are going to have an amazing. I mean, well, I'm not even going to say what I. That's that's cruel. I'm not going to go that far with, with my joke. But um, I think we all know how I feel about Trump. Uh, <laughs> that that's the other thing that grind that grinds my gears that pisses me the fuck off. It's the Trump shit. I don't know. I know how you say I feel about Trump. That's what everybody would <laughs> show up. <laughs> but I mean, I, I tell you, um, I've never seen like we all know politicians lie. Like we like Biden lies. Like they all lie. We know this. I think they think they telling the truth though. But go ahead. <laughs> well, you, okay, maybe, maybe, maybe. But the lies Trump tells, I'd be like, dog, you just say whatever you want because you know nobody's going to research. Your base isn't going to research it. You just say any fucking thing. I um, mean, it, it, it's, it's flabbergasting. I don't even use words like flabbergasting. But I'd be flabbergasted, nigga, watching Trump like, what the fuck did he say? <laughs> um, and Tr- <laughs> Sleepy Joe was whispering some true shit that night. He was I would tell you something. He was he was whispering some real shit, but he just couldn't get his bars off. You know, when, when he could formulate his thoughts, he was whispering some good information. Like you want abortion to be state to state. What what if somebody said, let's make civil rights state to state? Like it does not work that way. And I was like, oh, that's good, Joe. But he said, like, abortion. Like, speak up, Joe. God damn it, speak up. We can't hear you. Um, at one point, Trump said, I don't even know if he knows what he just said. I was like, oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Fucking Trump. Fucking Trump is going to win this election off jokes. He's going to win this election off roasting Biden. Oh, my God. But um, it was 
it's always entertaining. If Trump is involved, I will admit it's going to be a show. Um, yeah. and usually I'm laughing and I'm mad because he's he had some slick shit he got away with and he got a point for, and I know but nobody really is paying attention to the facts. I'm just like, oh motherfucker. But um it was not a good showing, man. And I don't know. Well, let me not even say, well, what do you guys think about the showing? Um, the part I know I was the only one that think that watched the whole thing, but from what you saw, what are your thoughts? And then I want I want to know what you think we should do next. But what are your thoughts on what you've seen of this debate and where this election lies now? Um, I didn't watch it. Um, I was more interested <laughs> in something else. But lucky, lucky I you. I knew it was going to be entertaining. Um, that's the world we live in now. People like to be entertained, whether somebody is right or wrong for this country. I really don't think that's a big priority for people. I think it's more of being entertained. Um, it was comical to me. It was comical to me. It's almost like they was like Drake and Kendrick just <laughs> song <laughs> <to> song. <laughs> So, I mean, it's entertaining. Um, it is what it is. We've been here before. So, I'm just sitting back and get have my popcorn and we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. But if they allow a convicted felon to be president, a lot of laws are going to have to be changed. Should be. Theoretically, they'll, they'll, they'll change it just for them and, and still make all of us suffer. But, you know. Randy T. All right. Um, I did. I did. Well, well, come on I'm, here. I'm going I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a <laughs> to say this. Um, <laughs> first of all, like nobody, nobody won the debate. The American people lost. If we ask who won the debate, I say, no, the American people were the losers. Um, this whole debate, it was style versus substance. Um, and Aaron Rodgers said this uh, some years ago when the, the team started out like 0 and 3, and he said, Everybody relax. Um, that's how debates start. Like, and the last time that they came, the first debate, it was the same way. They was like, Oh, he came out with Sleepy Joe with low energy. And then the next one, he came out and they was like, See, see, he's good, right? Nothing's wrong with him. So, hey, right, we've, Jackie's, like you said, Jack, we've been here before. I don't put stock into all of these our debates are only for people who are still like wondering what they're going to do right that's that's really what debates for because people know who they gonna vote for before nothing most people when they hear something in the debate and as many people who was like oh my god listen to joe biden who was cringing on every word uh, they still going to vote for Biden. <laughs> they going to vote for Sleepy Joe when they get in the booth in November. <laughs> he is still getting their vote. Um, but where it comes down to it, when with especially even with the Republicans, you still have your ultra conservative, you have your conservative, then you have your progressives, right? So still there are levels of even within the party. So even within both, neither party was happy with the showing, right? Because for the Democrats, they was like, for us, it weakened their position. That it said like a candidate that we've been running on, that he's strong and has all his faculties. And we don't have to worry about the decisions with him having his finger on the button and his age. Like we kind of like, eh, I don't know. I don't know, you know, <laughs> and then for the Republicans, they was like, especially like when he had a slam dunk with abortion and he fumbled it. I was like, man, I felt like I wanted to go back to the Bush moment where the dude in Israel threw his shoe at him. I would have <laughs> threw my shoe at Joe Biden if I was there. When he missed it, I was like, you had a slam dunk with abortion and you fumbled. But still, moving on. Then we go to the Republican Party and when like we're looking for Trump, like, okay, you've stood on immigration. You said this is your thing, but then you come out of immigration and then you say some stupid stuff like they're stealing the black jobs. Like what is the black job? So as I, if I am a conservative Republican, I'm like, oh no, like, what are you saying? So that's what I say, like, 
nobody won. The American people were the loser in this because nobody. So again, I hate Joe Biden's style, but Trump, you gave me no substance. You didn't give me one plan that you might do when, when it comes that when we put you in office, except for like you didn't say when it, Israel supposed to be, they're supposed to be your biggest allies. Do it be a two Palestine state? Uh, we never got an answer. I don't know. Do you support it? Do you not? Hey, is Putin your boy? Is he not? We don't know. For China, like, can we work this out? Or are we going to war with them? I don't know, because you never told me. Right? So we all, oh, this was a terrible, it was it was terrible. And we as the American people, we are all the, we are all the worst. <laughs> and we are all losers Thanks. for watching this. Thanks. And this, the worst part about it is, is it's not going to get any better. These are our candidates. And unless somebody drops dead, these are the candidates. Our choices. It's nothing we can do about it. Um, I, I, I do, I will going forward after this election. I think that I am finally, I'm going to vote against Trump this election. But I do think this is my last election voting Democrat. Um, or, well, I don't really vote party lines. I used to not vote at all. Then when Obama ran, I was like, all right, I vote. He, he black. Um, and then they got me sucked into the thing. Well, if you don't vote, then you can't complain. And I'm like, now I'm thinking, like, actually, I, I can still complain if I don't vote, actually. Like, now, fuck you. I can do what I want to do. I'm grown. But this will be the last time I vote for a candidate I don't believe in, I think. I think that I, I'm done with that. Um, I... I do believe it's very important to keep Trump out of office because of what he, the way he packed it, the, the Supreme Court, the way that all of these things are being overturned, the way he overturned damn near everything Obama did, and Biden still hasn't reversed it. In four years, Trump overturned like 90% of the shit Obama did. In four years, Biden has overturned like 30% of the shit Trump did. So there's still so much damage that has been done by Trump I will not vote for him. I will not sit by and let him win. To this election, going into the next election, well, if Trump wins, we can only do two terms total anyway. So I wouldn't have to vote against him. I'm about to say, if he wins again, then I will vote against him then. But he only gets two terms total. So yeah. after this election, my Ain't vote is going way. to whoever speaks to uh, my personal needs and the needs of my people. And then right. thirdly, the needs of American people. Right? The country as a whole is important. So I'm going to make sure yeah. you do the whole country correctly. But it's going to be me and my people, and then how you deal with the country. Because this is exhausting, dog. It is. Like, I, I, not a deal. I, didn't, I didn't like Bernie Sanders. I didn't like Bill Clinton. I didn't like Hillary Clinton. Um, kind of Al Gore. But I'm not a Democrat, so it's not like I want the Democratic. I don't like them niggas either. So it's kind of like I'm just voting against Republicans. And I finally get into I'm tired of just voting against Republicans unless I think they're really dangerous. Like McCain or somebody, I might have fucked mine and voted for him. Like, fuck, I'm tired of the bullshit the Democrats doing. Trump is just a whole another monster. I can't just go, fuck it, let Trump win because I saw what he's done. You got a whole goddamn insurrection. That's never happened in anybody's lifetime. Even nobody, nobody we know has ever seen it. In the history of the country, it hasn't happened. So that's different. But uh, after this election, I don't know, dog. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you, but this, this is where I say all the time, and I will keep preaching this, that by the time that they are Bernie Sanders or they are Joe Bidens or they are Donald Trumps, it's too late, and they running for president, it's too late. Like when they are at the congressional level, when they are at the when they are at the local level, that's why we as in our local areas, we need to put the pressure. Know who your U.S. representatives are. Know who your local representatives are, because this is where they build their name to be able to make these runs for president. And by the time they get there, it's too late. Then everybody's just voting down the party lines. It don't matter what they stand for. Cause now you got at least 80% of the vote just going with party lines. They ain't doing no research. It's just are you red or you blue. That's all I'm choosing. So it's the, if, if everybody makes their own 
decision in their own the district and then we can come together and collectively vote for the right people who stand for the right stuff where they live at then the people who make it to the congress who make it to dc they're gonna be the people who we can vote for and they're gonna be the people who we can believe in but that's why i'm like you i'm probably this is probably gonna be my last year that i'm i'm probably going independent from here and i didn't want to be declare the independent because you can't vote in the primary and i was like anytime you take something from me i'll be like i don't know if i want to do it when you tell me i can't do something <laughs> i'll be like i don't, I don't ever want to give privileges back so i was like i don't know if i want to do it but then i thought here's the flip side of it when you when you when you declare yourself for the part of the affiliation guess what that's all who talks to you the people who think you're gonna listen to them but if I'm an independent, guess what? Now, everybody want to know where, who getting your vote, man. So, look, I'm going to lottery for my vote every year from here on out. This is going to be the last one. I might can't vote in the primary. It just give me more time for y'all to figure out who I need to vote for. So, that's where I'm going with that. And you saying what you said, New, gave me my, de- made me determine right here. Like, that's what I'm doing here on out. Independent. Yeah, I'm going to. I'm definitely independent, I, but I am, I believe I am a Democrat on the ballot. Well, not the ballot, but I'm registered as a Democrat, I think. You're registered. Yeah. yeah. If you, whatever you register, that's how you have to vote. Right. Yeah. Unless, you, unless you're independent, like Clarissa says she is, that that's when you can, you do what you want. <laughs> Well, I, I can vote, vote so independent. You, when you walk when you walk in a booth, but but when you walk in a booth, if you a Democrat, they handing you the Democrat ballot. You're not getting the Republican ballot. You're getting a Democratic ballot. So all you can vote for are Democratic candidates no. unless you get to the next. Na- oh. Only in the national in November. Only in the national in November when you get the oh, vote. Oh, yeah, because, you, you because you you're voting. Right. Because you, 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 you have to pick your party's candidate. Correct. Yeah, but once you pick your party's candidate, then you can vote for whoever. I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying, though. You, you, it makes sense. I get what you're saying. Um, Jackie, again, Queen, you get the last word on this. I'm done. Now I'm too much. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you going uh, to vote though, right? Are, are you voting, Jackie? Okay, okay. good. So Rock, exercise your vote. Your That's vote it. makes a difference. That's what I'd say. Even even if you don't care who you care about, hate who you hate. Your vote, your vote makes a difference. Go vote against Trump. Having said that, if it's sports, yeah. if it's fashion, if it's music, um, if it's hustling, whatever, you just on a mar- you on a marathon, you know. So lawmakers have passed um, in March a long-awaited tenant protection bill aimed at protesting renters from subpar living conditions, um, and it also prevents. Uh, Renters, landlords from demanding uh, that you make three times the rent. So in Georgia, I think it was the Carlisle. Oh, I don't want to get to the wrong place and then bash them, and it wasn't them. There's a there are a few uh, housing communities, condos, apartments where they were uh, price gouging. They were using a software. I think we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, where the software would say, "Okay, the rent here is fifteen hundred." But according to the software that we have tweaked in your favor, it now says twenty one hundred. So now you can charge twenty one hundred according to this software that you had somebody tweak for you. But in reality, it might have said fifteen, sixteen hundred, and that's how the, the rent the rent gouging had become so rampant in Georgia because I think it was eighty five percent of the facilities in Georgia were using the same software that they all that they all presumably knew was gouging the rent prices and it was um, outpricing people. That's why people no longer really live, you know, they're way the fuck out. They way, eight, you know, 50 miles from Atlanta. Like everybody comes to Atlanta, but everybody lives far as fuck from Atlanta because well, even the suburbs of Atlanta, like you're not, you're not in Buckhead, you're not in Sandy Springs, you're not in Roswell, you're not in um, Alpharetta, you're way the fuck out somewhere because of the rent gouging. And now there's a law starting July 1st where they'll no longer be able to do that. I'm not sure 100% of how the laws implemented, how it will change. I don't, I don't, I saw nothing about it affecting people that were kind of quote unquote left in. 
But apparently, going forward, today or tomorrow, they won't be able to do that any longer. Um, that was one of the reasons I wound up where I'm at. Like, I'm not paying all this well, apartment when I can get a goddamn house. Like, hell no. Um, but I'd be curious to see how what that what effect that has. I would assume it would have a great effect. And this is a countrywide. So I know what they're doing in Georgia. I don't know what they've been doing across the country. But I would assume in some places it's worse, in some places it's a little better. But um, I think this is excellent, man. I gave them the Nissi Hustle Award because when I was recently looking to move and was looking at rent, and I was like, God damn. Like, this is this is crazy. How did it, what? Like, the last time I was uh, looking to move maybe a couple of years ago, it was around the pandemic. Yeah, don't even make three times the rent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, God damn, like, you, you really want Okay, all right. Um, so I think that's a good look. Little man out. Um, Randy, what you think about that? Look, you got like you got some thoughts on this. <laughs> um, I you know I, I always it's always two sides to every coin, right? So, um, and unfortunately, they are always good inside good and bad people on every side of every situation right so this law was enacted to protect some and it was enacted um to stop some who was taking advantage of some and that was on both on the landlords and the tenant sides um and um now, let, let's start with the tenants first because new always be like I'm always be on the flip side of stuff so let me start here right, um, right. anytime landlords who who, necess, who unnecessarily are taxing the people who are literally like funding your life like there should be protection um, against people taking advantage of people in that sense, right? Um, so I am happy that these laws are enacted, that those people who try to do those and who have who and who and have people who have suffered from those type of land, from the hands of those type of landlords, you know what I mean? That, that type, those trends are put to an end and they can never go forth again. So it is 100% excellent that something is in place so apparently so we hear that supposed to stop all that's going so you know a lot of times what we say and what happens and what really goes on is you know can be two different yes. things but it's good i'm glad yes. i'm for it bravo salute y'all did it now on the other side um if you've been a landlord and you you've rented your home to people and People broke their lease, destroyed your home, and you know, and didn't pay their rent on time. Didn't you? And you only got a one month security deposit, and it took you five months to get it livable again. <laughs> of somebody who didn't pay their rent for four, four months before you kicked them out. Now you've gone twelve months out of something that you was expected income out of. That now you got nothing out of. And you had to pour money into it just to start getting money out of it again, right? So, so on the flip side for landlords, you like, you know what? F that. Like the next person coming in here, y'all won't give me at least three months that because if you roll out on me and break your lease or whatever, that I at least got time, some money to recover this so I can get somebody else in here. So I think that it might have been where the mindset came from where landlords started doing that. And then you got people who took advantage of them just like, you know what? I don't want to take no chances. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. and, and, and some of them discriminated, you know what I mean? Just cause I don't like your, you know, you don't look like me. So I'm, I'm going to need three months. Right. And somebody who did look like me and be like, Oh, no deposit necessary. Just the first month is fine. <laughs> Right, <laughs> none of that happened too. <laughs> so. I, I like something Jackie would do. That's Jackie's style right there. She would like to talk. <laughs> Whatever. I think that there's still some wiggle room um, for both sides, um, especially for the landlords, because it says you charge three times the rent, but you can still do okay. I still need first and last month. So it still gives them a little bit of wiggle room to still have that standard and keep the certain type of people. 
because it's their establishment, you know, whether they on the good side or the bad side, it gives them that wiggle room to still have a little bit of high standards or what they're trying to achieve as far as the type of tennis that they want. Um, so, I mean, I, I think the three times the rent is was very excessive because a lot of people that even worked in the office did not make that. And even they were looking like, yeah, I know, I understand, yeah. I don't even live here either, but, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I can't like, afford you know? to live I, I work here, but I can't afford to live here. <laughs> but, I mean, but I understand both like sides. Like, they to you. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> but, but I think you get my apartment. <laughs> Right. Hopefully it changes things. Maybe we can see more moving specials that we used to see. Uh, you know, I don't know. So hopefully this is a great thing. But I think it, the three times the rent was that. That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. And um, the only thing I'll end that with is um, people aren't people are barely making. They're barely making two times the rent. It was a study that came out that was like the average. Rent in America was like fifteen, sixteen hundred. The average salary was like twenty five hundred. It was like no, they, people ain't even making double. So how they going? You know, pay. You know, we gotta raise these wages. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Or oh, you, oh, you gotta find a way to get out there and hustle, man. If they're not gonna if the job ain't gonna pay you what you gotta get paid, then you gotta try something else. As, as a person who has been a, a, a serial entrepreneur, I entrepreneur to go back to a job, entrepreneur to go back to a job. I've, tr- I've been trying in every single fucking way, but my goal is to, to to be properly compensated for the time I put in. That's what I want. The time I put in, whether it's 10 hours or 20 hours or whatever it is, am I properly compensated? And, right. um, I, I think I'm there right now. And um, if you want to know how I did it, uh, <laughs> inbox me. I give you all the information I got, but um, shameless plug. Shameless plug, yeah. But I'm telling you though, <laughs> Brandy, no, <laughs> this ain't no been, no, it ain't been no easy. But what's that old poem? Life for me ain't been no crystal stair. <laughs> like no, 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 no. <laughs> and, um, I was just laughing at that because it was oh, I'm gonna find it. It was a meme online that was like, um, you'll never know my story. It may look like. What was I'm about to read it to you if I find it, but it was like it was real and I was like, no breaks. It was long. It was something about like and I was like, never the real story. Like you never, I don't fake my lifestyle. I have good days, bad days, broke days, paid days, uh, up days, down days. But every day I keep it going. And then I added, yeah, no breaks. You know what I'm saying? I bet on some of my lowest days I, I look my best. You know, to y'all on social media. Some of my best days, I might look my lowest to y'all. Social media is real, but it's not complete. You don't really get the whole story. People say, man, social media fake. No, it's real. You just don't always get the whole story. You know what I'm saying? People have those good days. They show going off to you. You just don't necessarily see the bad days. Um, you haven't said that. We're going we to keep it moving. And then, <laughs> oh, oh, shit. Hey, that's that, that's good stuff, man. But look, uh, before you keep it moving, man, you just you just inspired me to say something I want to share with our viewers, and man, uh, it reminded me like when we went to Britney joint, how we was just talking in the back seat, and like our Uber driver was like, "I've been getting good tips from y'all," like <laughs> you know, what I mean, like we just we and she was inspired yeah. by our conversation, right? And. You know, something you just said, man, I was thinking about this today. And I was like, you know, if any like some things, looking at some trends, so I could been some up and downs in some areas. And I was like, something I need to remind myself of is that we all going to have good and bad days. But what we need to always be able to ask ourselves and be committed to, am I being the best version of myself right now? Right. And, 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 and right now, am I committed? to being the best that I can be in this moment, whatever this moment might be that that you find yourself in, right? And I think if we need to remind ourselves that whatever I, and whatever it is, whatever that level might be, it might not be at your level. Like your level might be 70 and mine might be 30, but if 30 is the best that I got, right? That I can give and I can say that I am committed in this moment that I'm showing up at the best version of me giving 
30, all 30 are going hard to, to, in the paint, right? Then that's what we just got to always ask ourselves that question, right, in the moment. And that's how we keep uh-huh. going. I 100% agree with that shit. And you saying that reminded me of something I sent y'all today. I don't know if y'all looked at it or not. We, we all we read all, it, man. Jackie loved it. <laughs> I'm let go. You have to eat differently. Like, you might have to change friends. It's like, you might have to eat differently. Like, you might have to change friends. You might have to study sleep, you know, to get from... Uh, from from B's to A's. It's like the, the difference between good and great it is underestimated by most humans. It's like, if you want to be good, you can be talented and be good. You can just, you can wake up and be good. Like, you know, but if you good and you just wake up and be good, you ain't, you're not going to be me. You're never going to be me if you're not like, if you're not doing, you know, 70 hour weeks on your craft. Right. And it's like, that is such a hard thing to communicate to people. And it's even more difficult when people are talented, when people get a B easy, they they think they got it, you know? And it's like, I'm telling you, it's like, it's not easy, but it is really simple to change your life. It's so simple. Right. It's like, I saw that shit today, and if you watch the podcast, you know Will Smith, one of my heroes. Like people say, corny, he this and he that. Uh, fuck you, and fuck what you think about him. Will Smith is literally one of my heroes in this game. It's been that way since I was like nine. When I first started wanting to rap, he was one of the first people I tried to mimic my rap style. After when he got into TV shows, I was like, I'm the first Prince of Bel Air because I let my you know, my mother died. I went and I was living in the hood. In Mayfair, Randy, remember that shit? And I moved with my aunt who lived in a nicer neighborhood. I was like, I'm the Fresh Prince. I left and moved with my aunt. <laughs> now, I moved with my aunt. And I was like, I'm the, I'm the Fresh Prince. So I always, <laughs> and Will Smith's book, his audio book, is my favorite book of all time. I listen to it weekly. I got that. If I'm having a bad day, I'm going to throw that as one on. Like, that's how much he inspires me. So I saw that quote and I was like, man. And I sent it to your eye because it's like, it's powerful. And it touched on what, literally what Randy was saying. But now I'm going to turn this over to y'all. I'm going to give y'all my, my feedback. But I know this is where y'all thrive. This is y'all segment right here. This is our mother freaking flicks and shit. What does that even mean? What the hell are y'all watching? Well, first, let me ask you this. Jackie, I'm going to start with you. The new episode of Ghost. Tariq. <laughs> you got the, uh, uh, the, the, the Diana's pregnant. You, you I got, love uh, where this is going. I love where this is going. Talk, talk to him. Talk to him. Man, well, now, I will say this. We have, I will... Elements. we have a new element because now you have, you're have you going to have the inside challenge and battle that Tariq's going to have that his child. He don't rewind, want to rewind, rewind it. Rewind it. Rewind it. They don't know what you're talking about. Uh, 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 uh. Rewind it. Tell them no what's spoilers, going on. Jack. Oh, no, 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 don't get no beginning. She can't get well, no spoilers it, either. It's Sunday, oh, no. it's Sunday Monday. They oh, should have right, seen it. Right, I watched right. it. Yeah, they should have seen it's it. too late. I'm just used to telling Jackie to know we just know Jack. We got it all. It's just a, it's just a reflex because because <laughs> she always spoke because she always tell us always <laughs> always. So I, I set it up for you, Jack. Uh, Tariq realizes that that per last episode, Diana was the one that went to Tommy's mother's house and gave uh, his mother's address to Tommy. And he thought it was always ta- uh, not Tasha. Yeah, Tasha. What's her name? No, Monet. 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 Yeah. It wasn't Monet. It was actually a daughter, Diana. And so he was he, he's on a mission to kill Diana. Diana and, and an old um, boy, um, Drew, has set him up to take the blame for everything and almost got him killed. So he's on his mission to kill her. He's looking for her. She runs to the old boyfriend, the little college dude house, kicks with him for a little bit. I'm mad, hey, I'm mad what happened with him. I'm mad. I hate that. I was mad about yeah, that. Yeah. 
Hey, I, I didn't like gotta tell us your point. We're gonna tell us the whole show. What's your, I what just we said going? I was mad about that. They don't know what I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to because she going straight to the, she going straight to the pregnancy. I'm trying to set this thing up. So uh, that's what I want. Taking too long. Land the plane. Yeah, no, 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 no. Relax. Simmer now. Simmer now. <laughs> uh, come on, sleepy Joe. Y'all was already at the plane. Y'all didn't want the plane to take off with me. So I know he fly. got off the plane, went back in the. He went back in the church. Oh, don't know. Don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to paint this picture, y'all. This is what podcasting is painting the picture. Clarissa hasn't seen this. She don't know what we're talking about. We got to paint the picture. When we on Sunday, you got to be up the car. <laughs> Clarissa said. All right, so. I'm not, I'm not doing that to you, Clarissa. It's been revealed that Diana is pregnant, and it, it was it was allegedly said that he's the father. On the on the, they argue me down, saying that Tariq isn't a father. It was really the, the father was the dude that you killed. I told them mm -hmm. that if that is the case, is a boring storyline, and I'm not interested in the storyline. The only way this becomes interesting is if Tariq is in fact the father. And when and I went viral off that that comment got like 200 likes. It was like, yeah, he right, he right, he right, he right. So now we're here. We don't know if Tariq is the father or if the dead guy is the father, but we know Diana is pregnant. Jackie. <laughs> um, what yes, does this so, mean? I love this storyline because they can definitely, definitely go off of this because he's going to have this internal battle of he knows he's like his father. He knows what he's gone through with a father like that. So what type of man, what type of father is he going to be? Does he want to raise this child? Does he want to just go off and just be like, look, I'd, I'd, I'd probably be better off if I'm not in this child's life because look what my father did to mine. So we've got all these questions of what he's going to be battling with on top of all the other shit he got to deal with. So this is a huge distraction. And you always know when, when, when people in those type of situations they have distractions, it can end up bad. It can end up good. So I'm excited about this. Yeah, and it's so it should play out, you know, in full. But I heard a rumor that there's an, a, another power show coming. It's only Tariq and Tommy. Oh, wait, wait, wait! Before they go there, let me, let me. Can I, can I get my eyes on that before we? <laughs> before we go to the next level, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah be, be quick. I, I, I am, but this, this is. Well, for me, her Diana being pregnant is for the show. If if it end with we end in the show and it's the little dude who died, then it's cool. Show over with. Bad, we ain't never coming back. But as a director, if it's Tyreek, baby, let me set this up for you, which I have not considered. What I saw, what this is why this was so excited. Why your comment went viral? Why it should have? Because now let's take. <laughs> We talking about first, if it's a boy, it's a third generational ghost. <laughs> Tariq was second generation. Now we talking about third generation. So he was the better version of the first. Now we talking about a better version of the second. <laughs> you know what I mean? Coming mm -hmm. as a man. So we just going there, right? With all the stuff that he learned now that's going down to the next level. Now, if he has a girl, now, let's take it there. What this is what now already got Tasha Monet and what with the what her mama is that they wasn't. She has the intellect that neither one of them had. So now you take both of their street savvy and put a Harvard degree by that and make it a girl with street and with street swag. Endless possibilities. Right. Either way, and, they either and, way they built they built a mogul is coming out of the belly. Either way, and you know it's gonna cause conflict between yeah. Tariq and and old girl Diane because Diane trying to get out. Tariq right. is okay in, so that's gonna cause conflict between them as parents. And it, it'll be yeah, it, hey, right. they could they could come back with something whole new and go somewhere else. Yeah. They really could. They, they really could, you know, 20 years later and have, have, have a little cats or not. 
playing the baby. <laughs> this teenage is great. It could be crazy. Like, it could be. It could be. Now, House of Dragons. Anybody watching that? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm hoping we done so I can be ready before it come on tonight. <laughs> it's time to be wrapping up. <laughs> yeah, I just watched last week's episode. Um, if you don't ever know what the names are or who you would, I'm always like, wait, wait. I thought that was the uncle. Oh, wait, that's the husband? Wait, what the fuck is going on? I'm always confused, but I figured it out as Big with the slams who went through all the information with me. Like, ah, so now I'm really caught up. I fully understand. This is this whole Westeros world. Um, is the wire in medieval times, man? With, with a, like it be real political going on. The family owning neighborhood trying get more neighborhoods and trying to take over. It really, I watch I mean, some dragon I see bullshit. I see like this some real nigga shit, but they got dragons though. And I, I always try to tell friends that don't watch shit like this. They talk it's the way we dragons. What's your fucking mind in fire? Um, and I, I am very curious to see uh, how this plays out familiar with these characters. Uh, I didn't read the book, so I am literally in season two getting to know these characters. When they talked about the characters in, in the series, it was the Mad King and people like that. They're now on this series. This is prior to them, right? This is prior to the Mad King. So these people, they're talking about I never even heard of something. No, the the, the the mad, this, this was 200 years before the mad came. See, so I, I, I have not to this, so I'm following it, but I have some um friends that know the whole story. Oh, yeah, you know, this is this and this is that, and you know, that was that sort of grandmother, and you know, so I'm, I'm just like, huh. but I need all of that to keep up. I need brief with people, I'm gonna start debriefing with you. I need to debrief with people so that I can, uh, oh, this is, uh, oh, and then. Okay. I am enjoying it. Um, Ray, if you want to give a quick um, three what's going on to every you don't know to look right. tonight or tomorrow yeah. or they watch whatever. All okay, right, like if you watch it now, like this is really like when they talk about the Game of Thrones, it's really like they playing chess with land. Like really, if you're a chess player, like this is really like the game of life being played with chess through the different families. It's different families. You can think of them like the different neighborhoods or the different gangsters or whatever who got their sets or whatever and wherever they at. And they all trying to hold down their own, their own places. Now, with this, with the difference in the House of Dragons, you got two families who, well, they the different from everybody else. Nobody has dragons but them. So when they was in the war room, it was the uh I think it was the last episode and Damon and the Queen was talking and they was like, Yeah, they got this person and that person, and that person. And Damon was like, I don't give a fuck. We got five dragons. <laughs> he was like, <laughs> he was like, they can bring, they can bring whoever they want, you know what I'm saying? And we're gonna burn them all down from the sky. Right, so he, he was like, "We good," and he's like, "You know what? If we lose more allies, we just need to go get two. It's two more dragons that don't nobody have. We just need to go capture them. And whenever they come, and they on one little rock, so now they think the queen did something dirty. Somebody has tried to assassinate a baby, and it wasn't her. But they tricked the whole nation into thinking it was her. So everybody turned against them and supposed to come against them. And so Damon, like, look, if we on this island." And we got seven dragons, plus we had the biggest navy in the whole fleet. So they got two things going for them. The, uh, the, they got the family that has the biggest naval fleet and the best fighters on the water. That's that's them two. That's, their, that's the Valerians, and that's who own the island, who they mm -hmm. own. So with the Valerians and with them who own the dragons, so with the House of Dragons, so now we got the biggest navy, and we like, we got the biggest navy and seven dragons, Whoever don't like us, come come at us. 
They just like come come and get us. Very <laughs> still. Never still. That's the, the best souls you can be. Yeah, come get us. They yeah. already sent one of the daughters. They was like, look, you take your dragon and you look over there. You take your dragon and you fly the skies over there. If anybody make a move, let us know. We ready. Come to the rock and come get these seven dragons. <laughs> so everybody supposed to be trying to come for them on this next episode. Now we about to see some dragon fights. We ain't seen a dragon fight this season yet. Tonight's supposed to be a dragon, our first dragon fight of the season. Uh -oh. So get your popcorn ready for nine o'clock. We seeing a dragon <laughs> fight tonight. <laughs> yeah, it is. Jackie, I, I would really- I'm you hyped. Must give me <laughs> you said what? Jackie, have you watched Game of Thrones? No, Jackie said she don't like none of it. Remember, she been saying she she tried. She can't get into it. <laughs> so I'm not yeah, watching yeah, that. Yeah. I'm actually watching Baby Reindeer. That's on my list. You mm -hmm. gotta tell me more about that. I be, I keep hearing good things about it. So actually, the the real person that he actually depicted, because the guy that wrote the story, he plays himself in, and he did it. So that's him. But the the girl that he portrays as being a stalker towards him, she's suing him for right now for defamation of character oh. because she's saying that the only reason why he's putting emphasis on the fact that she's a stalker is because he got raped by a man. Oh. Right. Oh. So. <laughs> right. But you also get to see how there's something <laughs> also psychologically wrong with him. And he does, yeah. you know, he does, he's very vulnerable and he's very open and transparent about some psychological things that he's dealing with as well that's got him to where he liked that attention from her when she was supposedly stalking him. So it's it's crazy. It's crazy, but you definitely gotta watch it. It's 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 definitely I, good. I don't know it was a true story. I yeah, mean, it's a true it's based on a true story and the playing the guy. That's him. That's him. Damn. Randy told me to check out um presumed innocence. Uh, yeah, I haven't checked that out yet. Presume, presumed innocent is 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 really is really really good. Like it's it's a deep it's a deep psychological. But on top of that, I gotta I gotta go to the top of my list now. And it's super sale yes. because I'm always oh, gonna go that. for like if if it's us promoting us, you know what I mean? Like I I I just love good stuff anyway whoever is made by it. but i am especially proud when our culture makes something great i am going to try to throw my support beyond that first right because if we don't support us who will um and super sale is an all black cast my man from lamar who was on bmf who was still my first was the first and greatest villain you can't stop the rain <laughs> you can't stop the rain my man lamar said Hey, he made that, he made me listen to that song world. different from now on, right? <laughs> he had, he saw in the joint, and he sound like Idris Elba in the joint when he started talking. I'm like, wait a minute! I'm like, this ain't you can't mm. stop the rain. Triple OG from BMF sounded like Idris Elba now on this joint, I, like cup of tea, love, like I, for real. They speak better than some of us. <laughs> they they do, but like, look, it's it's a it's a really good show, man. About us being empowered is is yeah. good black actors, good black cast, um, great storyline. Um, it's shot most of, it's all in the UK, all UK based, yeah. but um, is I, I I like it. Super Sale Netflix, add it to your watch list. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Super Sale will be my next watch. I'm start be the next thing I start will be Super Sale. So I might yeah, be the episode in tonight. I'm on that. But I have some in by, by next week. And then next yeah, week will yeah. be our, unless we do a middle of the week show, that'll be our last episode until I get back from Costa Rica. Costa Rica. Costa Rica. Costa Rica. Costa Rica. Costa Rica. Like, you taking your equipment to, to, to Costa Rica to do the episode? And I was like, no. <laughs> I'm going to be... <laughs> I'm gonna be Costa right. Rican. I'm not. Like, I mean, custom, I'm customs Costa keep Rican. your keyboard. You be pissed off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, customs yeah, be like, like, we don't. You cannot yeah, take yeah. this back. Right. <laughs> yeah, I, I ain't taking no chances. Hey, look, look, you, you can't. Know. You can't negotiate yeah, with customs know. either. If if it go into that can't go back basket, like you're not getting it back. <laughs> I paid too much money for this motherfucker. Hell no. Hell no. But um, 
So we gave y'all some good shows to watch. I'm going to run off quickly. Okay. Not as quick as I thought. I'm going to do this as quickly as I can. And this is our um, eargasm segment. I want to talk about music real quick. We all going to make it real quick because I'm not going to make me or Randy miss um, the it's House of the Thrones and Dragons. 95 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> this is a fantastic album, man. Let me borrow it. No, my brother. You've got to buy your own. I want to ask y'all what the song of the summer is. I'm going to give you the first 10 to 15 seconds of a song, and I'm going to go song to song to song to song, and y'all tell me what I think. And I, I'll go with the, the one. I started with this. Got to my trying to push this bitch. These niggas talking out of their mouth, so no coughing out of your mouth. I'm way too paranoid for it. Hey, hey, let's get it. Rose, BOT, the money power respect. I'm not bad, bitches. I'm pretty than a motherfucker. Hoss be looking okay. Yeah. He fucking with me. Is this bitch what? okay? He said he ain't fucking around. I look at him like, okay. I used to be down bad, but now I'm bitch okay. I'm pretty than a motherfucker. He looking okay. She say that she fucking with me. Is this bitch okay? He said he ain't fucking around. I look at him. You might be the first one that didn't make my list. Y'all wait till Jesus come on. Is it only rap songs? Is this all we considering? Right. Or Randy song. Dude, that, that's my that, 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 all right. This, this, this is my number one right now. This is my number one right now. This is my number one summer song right here. I ain't never lost a set. Out of those songs, well, actually, out of those songs we heard, I want to know what your vote is for Song of the Summer. Or it's only one more I want to add. Or is it? I see dead people. No. Must be a hundred feet, hope, deep, boat, deep, 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 all right, if I had to add one, it'd be Lenny Kravitz stuck in the middle. That's my I, song. I didn't think that was a hit. I didn't think nobody man, was like that for me. Man, that's I a summer jam. That's, that, that song a whole oh. summer vibe. That's a but, that song is a like, whole summer. Like people, people, song people ain't summer. caught people ain't caught people it, have not caught no on to it yet. But mark my words, before this summer is over with, Stuck in the Middle by Lenny Kravitz yeah, is going to be a hit. Like, it's going it to be a where everybody plays the playlist. Like, okay, so y'all know we got a partner and kickback playlist. I've released some Apple Music. I've did it every week. And my song from Lenny Kravitz's last album, Stuck in the Middle, 
because it was my favorite song when I played why it. You ain't put a, you ain't, why you ain't play it? You should have played play five else. rap songs. Like, you should have threw that because in there. I'm, I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. I go about what the people like. I take the I top songs out of what everybody like. Hey, and say, because this we could be. Both. Let's go. Let's go. This going to be a, this gonna be a <laughs> summer vibe right here. I've got this feeling that we were together before this human form. Y'all heard it. First. Y'all heard it here first. Oh, <laughs> name kicked back. I am here yeah. to let you into my body. I can let go. You are the reason why I kept on searching, and now. I'm that's a beautiful song, but he's saying you was everything I looked for before we got into him form. God dang. Always forever, always for for better. I'm here to love you. You are my home. And that's the spoke stuck in the middle. Stuck in the middle. Deep in my heart, and this feeling's old oh, so real. Stuck in the middle, stuck in the middle. Deep in my heart and my soul. All right, that, you gave him enough. You gave him enough. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had to do a fade off because I they hit a beat. <laughs> and I cannot end. You, you gave him enough, man. Jack got a question. Jack got a question. Oh, boom, boom, boom. Jack, do you recommend any supplements pre or post workouts? Definitely. Um, I do. I used to do pre workout. Um, the only thing that I will tell you about that, it does have niacin in it. If you're familiar with niacin, it's going to make you itch until you get activated with your workout. So just be mindful of that. Um, I do my BCAAs, of course, daily. Um, I always do my protein. I try to get my protein in, whether it be a protein shake or protein through my food, at least 30 minutes after your workout. That's the best thing you can do for post-workout. Protein, Make yeah. Drink so your, the BCAAs, those branch chain amino acids, especially for men, we, you, you got to have those to, to before or after. To they, are they more effective, Jackie? Um, I actually like to do it during. I drink it in my water, so I uh, like to do it during. Um, yeah. because I like for things to be activated. Like while I'm working out, you're burning calories, so that's uh, just repetition you as you're working out. So I like to get things just flowing all the yeah. way through. So at the hey, same, do it. And that's the BCA. I like, I like the pre- BCAA. BCAA BCAA branch chain amino acids. That's what it. That's what it stands for. Um, it's, okay. and it's something especially working out they 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 important for uh building those for breaking down and building back up outside um, I, workout, I like pre-workouts me oh yeah outside of workout i have to you are yeah. taking cmos ashwagandha is very good for men and women but very mm-hmm. good for men ashwagandha yeah. um you definitely want to take care of that you also want to do some turmeric because you want to boost your immune system you don't want to do it when it gets into the cold system go ahead and boost your immune system now so when you get to the cold season it's already working for you. Yeah, and that's and, and he that's asked about creatine. I, I was gonna ask. That. Yeah, I was gonna ask this too, Jack, because I do. I my my pre my pre workout. Um, I have creatine. It's creatine and um and nitrous oxide in both in, in my in my pre workout. Yeah. Um, because that it for me pre workout. I just have way better workouts with a pre workout. Like I'm. I'm destroying my workout like with <laughs> both of those. But creatine. tell if you want to tell them, tell them about the benefits of creatine and um, nitrous oxide. Yes, creatine does have the nice in it. That's what gets you itching. So that's what gets you. It almost gets you ready for working out. It, it pushes you a little bit further. It gets your body, your blood flowing. It gets your your happy dopamines flowing to get you ready for your workout. So a lot of times, like when I first started working out, I needed that to give me a boost because I wasn't. Huh, you know, you drag in the morning, you're like, uh, I mean, I do want to work out, but eh. but you get that in you and you start itching because it, it, it really gets you to be like, let me hurry up and get this workout in because this itching is getting on my nerves. So, <laughs> so it really gets you going to start your workout and push through your workout and do a little bit more than what you would normally do. All right, right. Okay. Yeah. 
I need someone else so because sometimes when I go to work, I'll be like, mm. I never thought because I'm gonna get, get, yeah. get some help, get a supplement. But yep. that's, the and that's why I work out in the morning, pre-workout. Exactly. exactly. Get your day started, get those happy dopamines flowing, going. It makes you feel good. No workout does not drain you. It actually gives you energy. So please don't think that you work out, you're gonna be done for the day. No, you're gonna be really ready for the day. So you definitely want to get your proper sleep. Six to eight hours. Don't treat, don't, don't cheat yourself. At least get six, but push for eight because you will definitely see a difference between six hours and eight hours of sleep. Indeed. Okay. Boom. That, that, that was you talking directly to me. I, I hear you clearly. <laughs> um, I do want to also let y'all know that Marsha Ambrose dropped a new album. Maida dropped a new album. Made the Stallion dropped a new album. Kyla Gray dropped a new album. Lucky Day dropped a new album. And Kalani dropped a new album. And let's okay. go back to Marsha, please. Let me go back to Marsha. Marsha. That was produced by Dr. Dre. The produced whole album. Entirely by Dr. Dre. Yeah. And oh, nice. Mar Marsha's Man. words, not mine. These are Marsha's words, not mine. It's a whole lot of fucking music. Okay. Yes. Uh, I made a boat so I can listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm definitely yeah, going man. with now. I'm going with TGIF. When you hear that, when you hear that drop, no matter where you are in a car, in a club, lounge, it gets you going. The one liner, everybody knows that. 7 p.m. Friday, 95 degrees. We all know that in here in Atlanta because it's been extremely hot. But that she's got a banger. Rihanna cosign. It's out of here. It's been a Rihanna Let's video. I'm gonna that's tell you, Marsha Ambrosia joint. No, that's um a Glorilla. Really? Okay. But I'm gonna tell you, what does it for me right now is JT and Jeezy. Okay, it's JT from City Girls song, but Jeezy, I'm on a remix and he does the first verse, and everything Jeezy says in that verse, it's like the nigga anthem. If you notice, all the songs he played was Glorilla, JT. It was all these women. Jeezy's verse, maybe not the whole song, but Jeezy's one verse is the nigga anthem of the summer. I mean, if, is, if it, is it on, the, it's on the playlist? That, it's on the playlist. I just updated it. Matter of fact, it's the first song on the playlist. It was just updated right. today before the podcast. Hey, if y'all don't have it, download the part name Kid Back playlist. Updated. Apple weekly. Music, download it. Updated weekly. That's how you know what that's stuck in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Big Casey, working out after work does drain you because you've already been to work. You've already eaten, put some on your stomach, whether it be good or bad. You've already used your energy. So, yes, it can drain you because a lot of times people fail to work out after work or in the evening because they're tired. But when you get it in the morning, mm -hmm. it sets your tone for your day and your week. So I definitely yeah. recommend in the morning. I'm just personally, and it's not for everybody. Like Some people like to work in the middle of the night. I like to work in the morning. I like to get my day started. It sets my tone, and it makes me make better decisions throughout my day because I worked out. I hundred percent agree. And I work till midnight, well, eleven p.m. most nights. I ain't no working on after that. Well, um, <laughs> I, I unfortunately I have not been on my dean. So Costa Rica, you gonna get whatever body I give you. <laughs> you gonna get whatever body I give you, Costa Rica. It is is what it is. But when I get back. Be feeling when y'all be like, oh, but look how they look. No, you getting the body that hey. <laughs> hey, you get the body. But when I get back, I'm getting with get fit with Jack. We we, okay. we we gonna fix this thing. I I done had 25 pounds that won't go away. I, I go down 15 pounds and go back up 10. Go back down five. Go back up five. Go. I, it's 25 pounds I can't get rid of. And it's I really 30. It's really 30. It's your sleeping habit. That's the only thing you need to fix. Your sleeping habit and just really like tweak your eating a little bit more discipline and you there. You'll figure it out. Y'all gonna see um, <laughs> Christmas. When I, well, I don't call it Christmas. I call it Malcolm Xmas. You'll see me Malcolm Xmas when I'm the only dude with no shirt on in, in Atlanta doing a holiday. You're like, Jackie got him right. God damn. Yeah. Got him right. Like, got this right. my Christmas picture. <laughs> <laughs> you, ain't, you, ain't, you ain't gonna be the only one. It's gonna, it's gonna be a bald head white man running beside you. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> well, I do want to thank y'all. I mean, I, well, I'll say this: um, we didn't get into sports. 
Um, the Wizards drafted Alexander Saw with the number two pick. Atlanta, where, where we all live, well, except for Randy, but Randy been out here forever. Um, they picked um, Zachary Rishache with the number one pick. Um, the Wizards also selected Bob Carrington from Baltimore with the number 14 pick point guard. And they selected um, Keyshawn, can't even remember what his last name is, um, with the number 24 pick. So the Wizards have a big three rookie trio. I'm very excited about that. Y'all know I'm a Daha Wizards fan. Um, it feels these young guys are all tall, they're long, pause, they play defense, and they're they're the new generation, them and Bilal Kulabali and one or two of our other youngsters. That's the future of our team. And we have a direction. And I'm super excited for having the direction. I can't wait to some of these our summer league games start July 12th. So I'll be watching them right before Costa Rica. Going to 14th. And um I'm excited to see how these young young guys look, man. I'm super, super excited. Bob Carrington from Baltimore. Point guard, street ball, just uh, 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 uh. I can't wait. Six five. Can't wait to see it. Alexander Saar from a seven, seven foot, a seven foot five wingspan, can cross over dribble, can shoot the three. It's a shot blocking monster. 37 inch vertical at seven foot tall. He jumping down there, how's Jordan? He's seven feet tall, dog. The future looks bright. We're going to be sorry this year, as we should be. But the future looks bright the next two, three years. Um, and Atlanta, y'all made some moves, too. Um, the Hawks made some moves. So we'll see. They traded to John T. Murray. Um, we'll see how those moves play out. Um, I always pay attention to Atlanta because I'm here. But I'm a Wizard fan. And um, I do want to shout out Angel Reese. I was very disappointed when the Mystics did not draft her. We drafted Aaliyah Edwards, who's a fine young woman. But I wanted Angel. And Angel today broke the record for the most double-doubles in a single season, back-to-back, in the history of the WNBA. And all y'all motherfuckers that was telling me, no, you give Aaliyah a chance. She's going to be better than Angel. Is she? Is she? Angel Reese has broke the record for a rookie, sophomore, senior, retired player, most double doubles consecutively in the history of the WNBA. Is the league going to be better? Averaging fucking four points. Uh, anyway, she she averaged the same numbers as Barney James. But <laughs> that's never you know, me. <laughs> I want to thank y'all for tuning in. Man. Yeah, man. I got a root for Aaliyah because she's she on our team. One in a million, Aaliyah. Aaliyah, you one in a million. I'm too big of a Mrs. fan to have you be mad at Do me. Your thing. Keep doing your thing, Aaliyah. If you listen to the show, we love you. Yeah, you one in a million, baby. Baby girl. I'm Timberland. You Aaliyah and I'm Timberland. Baby girl. <laughs> she don't see. And Randy R. Kelly. And having said that, we're on our way out. <laughs> and Jackie Missy. <laughs> I want to thank y'all for tuning in. It is an absolute pleasure to do this podcast for y'all every week. Every time I see that we're charting in Kenya or, or New, New Amsterdam. Love you, Kenya. Denmark. Oh, we'll there, right? Denmark. Every time I see that we are, I'm about to tell y'all right now. Uh, every time hey, I see keep a listening, country, Kenya. We love y'all. Hell yeah, Kenya. Love you. Uh, New Zealand, Denmark, Australia, United States, of course. Whenever I notice that we're charting in different countries across the world, I just go, there's somebody somewhere that wants to know what we think. They want to know what Jackie thinks about this TV show. They want to know what Randy thinks about this election. They want to know what I think about this new music. They want to know what Britney thinks about, you know, this, you know, the uh, fashion. They want to know what J. Lou thinks about, you know, the crime and punishment. Like, they want to know what the fuck we think. There's people all over the world that tune into us every fucking week. Either they're on the live stream and watching us live on YouTube or Facebook, or they're listening to the audio on Monday mornings. So Sundays at 7 p.m., we're live on YouTube and Facebook. If you want to watch us live and, and interact with us like Big Burger or like Clarissa, um, who else be, to, be, be on live chatting with us, Randy? Uh, we got Tina. Yeah, you know, Tina. Who's always dead. We got Sheree. We got a few. Um, oh, I forgot my man ain't been here tonight. Big, well, we said Big KC always. Big KC. Well, you're not calling him Burger. You know what I'm saying? That, 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 uh, that, Burger. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
We can yeah, feel we, don't um, the, we don't know our burger. We know big cases. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, that, that's what it is, man. You can tune in live on Sunday nights at 7 p.m., even on the No Breaks New YouTube channel or on our Facebook page, The Pod Name Kickback. Or you can um, watch, listen to it live Monday morning at 5 a.m. Are you getting ready for work at your morning workout? Listen to Jackie talk you through those workouts. And she, um, yeah, that's fit, Jack. She's heard the Nicholas voice. <laughs> and um, thank you. We appreciate you. We hope you make this week your bitch. Make this week your bitch. That's right. Get up on that's time right. every day. Do your workout. Bust your ass at your job. Spend time with your family and friends and loved ones. Help raise the community. Even if you don't have kids, contribute to some right. child's life. And have some fucking fun too. Don't do all the work <laughs> and get to the end of the week and be like, ah, enjoy yourself too. Now, that's all we want for y'all. See, when you come back in next Sunday, we can laugh and joke about the week we had. And on yeah. that note, I'm on my cars up. <laughs> Joe Four, Joe Four, skip you, skip you, reverse you, reverse you. Joe Four, the color is green, lime green, like our new little. Tag line down there. <laughs> uh, uno, we out. We out. Peace.